Let's get a reader on the theme set to drive the market this week. Pete McGuire joining us from XM. Pete, good morning to you. Um, now, of course, we should take into account where we're at just as far as New South Wales is concerned with the lockdown. That, that's certainly going to be weighing on the local market, you would have thought, at this point, because there is the prospect that this could be protracted. Absolutely, Andrew. Yes, and how long it takes to you know roll through all the motions and what impact it's going to have to the domestic economy, certainly. Uh, though, there might be the other side to it. I mean, you've got very strong residential property prices and possibly traders are going to think that there might be a, a quick turnaround and, you know, it's cheap buying. So on the back of everything that we saw in the US on Friday night, there could be the other side as far as uh, you know, a bit of a positive tone coming across our market over the next week or so. All right. OK, well, where are we sitting then, particularly, I guess, as far as central bank policy is concerned? Because we're seeing a bit of a divergence sure. emerge, aren't we, with some, some economies? Clearly, as you're seeing that growth momentum emerge yet in yeah. others, they're trailing. Absolutely, Andrew. And that offers, and I think that's the study point for today, everyone that's at home, do a little bit of research as far as carry trade. The carry trade is very interesting. That's what the Japanese female traders, they, they term them Mrs. Watanabe, was always the, the carry trade. Cheap uh, interest rates in the Japanese yen or cheap in the, in the Japanese economy and buying other assets with faster growing uh, economies and faster growing interest rate environments, being Kiwi mm. or Aussie dollar. So that's being, a, a, I think, another turn of that, Andrew. The Kiwi, the loony, the pound, the US dollar may shine certainly in the foreseeable future, while you'll have the laggards being the euro, Swiss franc and so on. So where does Australia sit in that then? Well, I think we're going to work through it. I mean, you know, as Kiwis, they say will be first cab off the rank. So if they are first cab off, then do we get the, uh, do we move along with them? Are we, you know, towards, but we've got so many mixed messages. So is it going to be a 23 play? I hear some people say it's going to be 24 until we see a rate rise. Our dollar's been hemorrhaged, Andrew. I mean, I've got notes here. It's just under 75 cents. Thinking of what we've experienced in the last couple of months, everyone was very bullish that we'd be through 80, and now we're under 75. So uh, I don't know how long it's going to be for the lockdown. That's where I've never lived through one of these, and I'm sure neither of you. So it's a bit of uncertainty, and that creates... Um, you know, un uncertain times create sometimes opportunities, but also you've got to be aware and, and carry the risks. Yeah, so you're not expecting the RBA to then shift its policy any further at this point? Well, I don't think so, Andrew, because we've got to work through this process as far as the eastern states and what's happening in New South Wales. It's a powerhouse, as we know. So if we're here and God forbid, imagine if it's three months. And plenty of people are talking like that. You know, you talk mm. to different people on the street and so on and shopkeepers and you go and buy a coffee and they're very worried about the long term horizon of where we are come September or October. So everyone's got a different viewpoint. Everyone's sick of it to the back teeth and uh, conscious as far as what happens, you know, from an, uh, from an economic play and what impact it has to small business, the economic carnage associated with it. Yeah, so we're seeing that play out, obviously, with the Delta variant in Australia. There is that risk globally, is there not? Because we're still seeing a lot of cases, but of course, a lot of those countries way ahead of Australia as far as vaccination rates are concerned. But what sort of risk does that pose for the global economy, do you think? Well, you, I think of what it does, Andrew, it puts a handbrake on it as far as, you know, the coming out of, um, you know, interest rate forecasts or interest rate tick-ups, economies go back to, you know, a... a a lockdown mechanism and, you know, more government stimulus. So is that, so we're really positioned on the knife's edge. Are we in an interest rate that we're going to see the carry trade and we're going to see all of those opportunities come the end of the year and starting to unwind? Or is it going to be a, a, a longer term issue and circumstances that present themselves to us that we're mm. here and, you know, this could be the next, this is where we are in another year. Who would have thought this time last year that we'd be sitting here on the 12th of, Jan of July uh, and me not in your studio and, and doing this from Coogee and, you know, I'm allowed to have one person and uh, see one person outside and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, it is uh, quite unbelievable where we are, as you say, 12 months on. Uh, okay, so Pete, uh, investor-wise then, how do you play this? I mean, um, I guess particularly where equities are at the moment, we're seeing what's going on in the States, uh, perhaps not quite so much steam locally. 
Uh, but when you look at the sure. different asset classes, how do you play it? Well, I think you've got to look at Andrew having a global uh, portfolio and a many, you know, small traders and retail traders uh, involved in the US market. So they're, they're trading on stocks on those markets, Euro, Euro European bourses as well. But the, the, uh, there's plenty of markets that have got opportunity. And just because our market's still, you know, around that 72, 73 handle, there's currency markets to look at. Gold seems to be making a little bit of a revival to the upside. Look at the currency side of things. What's happening with the US dollar index? That's something that I keep a very close eye on at 92.13. So all of those components and impact as far as retail sales, inflation data, what's happening with PMIs and all of that gives the, the, the trader the opportunity to learn. And these times, if you're sitting at home, go and do some study. If you're not sure of anything, really, you know, watch you guys, but take notes and, and try and increase your, not only your vocabulary as far as the knowledge on economies, but certainly the other side of it as far as what are the what are all those moving parts and what where are opportunities and where do they present themselves? Is it the healthcare sector? Is it mining? Is it, you know, industrials? Everyone's got to do their own, homework andrew to uh, see those green shoots yeah well that's why we have you on the show pete to uh to get oh. more of advice to inform investors well, great to have you well likewise andrew and thanks you're doing a great job too cheers no worries. all right thanks